in a world and time when so much is changing, there is still so much of our culture that has to be documented and kept alive. Who are the bearers of these precious living cultures? How do they pass on a knowledge transmitted through the ages? What they represent has survived colonization, conflict, marginalization, and yet they persist. Sila ang sisidlan, the living vessels that store dayaw, our knowledge, our pride. In a world that is run by technology or in our own gadget-dependent lives, we often think of indigenous art forms as merely simple handicrafts, folk songs, or melodies. What we fail to acknowledge is the intricacy, both of the finished product as well as the process that these entail. In our continuing series on the Gawad Manlilikanang Bayan Awardees or Gamaba, we look at the intricate processes of a metal work artist from Pampanga, a chanter from Iloilo, and a musician from Basilan. From the tangible to the intangible, their work embodies a commitment to the spirit of their communities and their traditions. A man of few words, Eduardo Mutok seems like the proverbial introspective artist who would much rather let his work speak for himself. And what thoughts, what words and memories are revealed by his glistening masterworks? On altars and carrozas, on frontals and other pieces of religious furniture, Mutok's work connects us to the gilded age of our own Catholicism when altars were replete with the Baroque refinements and excesses. Call or describe it in artsy terms for this quiet man. This is simply the art of pukpok or beaten metal. Nung araw kasi yung pinsan ko may antique shop. Namasukan ako sa antique shop. Siya naman ang gawa niya, namimili ng mga antiques. Lahat ng mabili niya, pinagagaya sa amin. Sa katagal ng panahon, natutunan kong magtrabaho ng ganyan. Yung nga may namimili nga sa akin siya gawa ko eh. Yung may naglalako nga sa Manila. Natagpuan ni Mr. Robusan. Lahat ng ginagawa ko, binibili ni Mr. Robusan. Nung isang araw, pinasama ko ni Mr. Robusan doon sa binibila niya. Nagkakilala nga kami yan. Doon nagumpisa kami ng ikunuan sa NCCA, yung gawa ko. Nagustuhan niyang NCCA. Ayun, nagumpisa na noon yung mga gawa ko. Nakilala nga ako sa yakin ganyan ang ginagawa ko. Nga nung panahon ni Gloria Makapagal Arroyo, nung nagumpisang makuha sa NCCA, doon ako nahawar. The masterwork commissioned by the late national artist Ramon Obusan is now the proud centerpiece of Bahay ni Kuya. The study center that houses Obusan's vast collection of archival footage, folk dance, notations, and material artifacts. The piece allows a deeper understanding of Mutuk's skill, both as a designer and craftsman. Kagawa ako muna ng pattern. Pagkayari ng pattern, kagawa ka ng molde. Sakawin mo muna ikuhan, iguguhit. At pagka guhit ng pattern, yun namang moldi ang gagawin mo. Pagkayari ng moldi, 
Yun namang yellow brass ang susunod mo para lumitaw yung design. Pupukuan lang pupukuan nyo. Pagkalitaw ng design, sa sayang na naman ng lagay. Bubuhayin mo na naman yung design para na-finish na. Pagka-finish ng design, itutubog mo na naman sa silver. Pagka wala sa silver, gagawa ka naman yung pag pinaka-frame. Mutuk's ability to design became evident when he demonstrated how his vision is transformed from a piece of paper to a finished beaten plate. Ito yung design ng crucifix. Pattern ng crucifix ito. Pagkayari uh, ng pattern, gagawin mo sa kaoy para moldin mo. Pwede nang gumawa nito. Yung mga ganyan, yan. Ako na gumawa nito, ang mga pattern nito. At tagal din kasi, bago mo gawin sa metal, yung magpa-pattern ka muna. Pagkaraan ng pattern, sa molde na. Yung molde may uh, matagal din ginagawa. Kasi, inuukit din yan eh. Kung misan, merong isang linggo gano'n. You will find that Eddie Mutok is very good in this until now. And so he is the inheritor of a long tradition. Unfortunately, there are very few other people who, who make this, who have continued this tradition in the country. And we value the work of Eddie Mutok because he has, has really preserved it. And I hope he can teach this, he can teach this to the people in his community. In the work of Eddie Mutuk, I am reminded of that old Jesuit motto that all things we do, we do for the greater glory of God, ad majorem de gloria. Intricacy is most often seen in works like those produced by Eddie Mutuk of Pampanga. Our eyes take in all the details of his work and our hearts are full. It is a bit more challenging to open our minds and hearts to the intricacy of Federico Caballero's powerful chanting. Madap nun sa bukad yung tarang ban bukay nga ka rundalan ambuya. When the interview was conducted, Federico Caballero had just lost a son, but he bravely went on sharing his knowledge and his passion for the chant that he had been recognized for. Perhaps in the tragedy that had befallen their family. He was all the more deeply aware of the impermanence of life, as well as a need to continue an epic tradition that he was only a vessel of. A sulut bukidnon from the mountains of central Panay. He has mastered the ten important epic tales of his people. He chants these in the Kinaraya language. This great oral tradition would have been lost had not Caballero persevered in committing the epics to memory. Traditionally sung while lying on a hammock, the stories of mythic heroes like Labaudungon, 
in whom adapt nun come to life, much as his own grandmother's chanting brought them to life for the young Federico. <laughs> From generation to generation, since uh, since birth now, nagaral siya sa nanay namin dahil yung mga great great grandfather namin hindi na nabotan kaya sinalin sa nanay namin. Bahalin sa bata pag inaukuran. Walang oras daw pag pag maganda ang modo niya parang kanta lang naman yan eh na ano tapos yung Kakaramihan, yung, yung chant, uh, sinachant yan, mga, ano, mga, tapos sa uh, hapunan, bago matulog. Di amuran niya, nabuol ko na sugidan, ganun nga amuran. Iba daw itong aming lugar sa ibang, uh, ano dito, na community. Dahil parang dito ang source ng lahat-lahat na talinto ng uh, sa uh, as para sa uh, uh, panaybukin noon tribe uh, master sa epiko master sa dance master sa lahat-lahat na sa na chant yung binibigkas is archaic language maraming hindi nakaintindi na ang ibig sabihin ng archaic language the famous language of the past Today he continues to work with the Bureau of Non-Formal Education, traveling from barangay to barangay and encouraging older folk to learn to read and write. Ang mga apo, mga pamangke, mga pinsan, lahat-lahat na interesado sa ipik. Yung si Hukan Ana isang chanter doon, lola rin namin. Pagaling din sa lola namin yung kaalaman niya. So, mas maano pa yung sa kanya, mas lamang pa siya. Dahil yung pinanggalingan ng Epic ni Huganan, sa lola din namin, doon, doon, yun ano palaki ka sa kanila nung dahil nauna sila sa amin eh. Lahat na daw kapatid niya, marunong mag-chant na ano, kaya lang noon, parang wala nagka-interest dahil wala, parang ikinakahiya itong uh, epic ko eh. The presence of a chant is an indicator of the creativity of the community. The moment a chant disappears, that means the community has already become consumerist, just like, just like the many urban centers in this country. That's why it's important that we present the, we preserve the chanting tradition of the Salud Bukidnon in the person of uh, Federico Caballero. And uh, Federico Caballero was able to teach only a very few people in his, his community, but now his, his uh, teaching has spread to many, many parts of Tapas, Capis, and even in Kalinog, Iloilo. That's why the chant has become much more alive. Uh, in, in his in his uh, area now. He knows the importance of committing to paper, the vanishing epics and life ways of his people. In many ways, Federico Caballero is his own epic story. Aman tolin gasab ura katin as gasab ug. When I first listened to the music of Uwang Ahadas, I had to keep reminding myself that this virtuoso was in fact blind. Sophisticated is the word that comes to mind upon hearing the full yakan and sum led by the virtuoso Uwang Ahadas. I can't help but wonder if his deep understanding his exploration of these intricate overlaying of beats have anything to do with his blindness. If that is true, then his eye ailments have made his internal life so much deeper and much more rewarding. A native of Lamitan Basilan, the young Uwang was said to have been punished 
by offended nature spirits because of his child play. If this is true, then the spirits must have given him an even deeper gift, a mastery of the complicated rhythms and instruments that make up the Yakan musical ensemble. From the gabang or bamboo xylophone, to the agung, to the deceptively simple quintangan kayu, to a gamut of other instruments, Uwang Ahadas has mastered them all and performs with an energy and bravura that matches the vibrancy of Yakan music. Among the Yakan, the Kulintang usually has, has only five notes. How, how you cannot play so many melodies with only five notes. That's why their, their concept of music is highly rhythmic. And to the use of uh, what is called interlocking rhythms, interlocking rhythms are uh, you, you play simultaneously different rhythms at the same time, uh, you are able to create melodies. Uh, some, uh, we, can, we can call this uh, uh, nuclear melodies. No? It's able to play nuclear melodies using interlocking rhythms. And um, the, I think the, the most, uh, well, rapid way of playing the kulintang is found among the yakan, especially in the playing of, uh, well, uh, Wong Ahadas and other kulintang performers, simply because uh, the, of the rhythmic way of, of uh, playing the, the kulintang to create nuclear melodies, you have to really make sure that uh, you, in a way, mesmerize the audience with the speed of your playing. Kaya niya naisip na gumawa ng gabang dahil noong una, wala pa silang agong. Kaya sabi ng tatay niya, uh, mauna mo na siyang mag matuto sa gabang. But perhaps the most joyous aspect of his music making is the fact that an entire family gets together to help him create this tapestry of sound. When dressed in their yakan finery, they become a living work of art, where the textiles, the colors, the movement, and the energy become one with the music. What I do know about Uwang is that uh, he has a fantastic family. They probably uh, should be given a group prize, but they do almost anything. and. Uh, Music-wise, dance-wise, weaving-wise, uh, all of them are really amazing and beautiful people. Huh? Um, I recall seeing them all dressed up, no, to to play in their traditional uh, textiles in their in, in their clothing, and you will be bowled over by them, talaga, because they look so stunning. Uh, and they display so much artistry. The problem is that because of the demands, no? because of the demands of the um, search, it has to be done so slowly. Kasi iilan-ilan lang naman yung, <laughs> yung makaka-go out into the field sa mga bundok-bundok yan, eh, no? Uh, at saka sa mga islang medyo kukukunti ang tao, ano? Uh, it's hard to find researchers, one, who have the savvy, no? Um, a young researcher sometimes will miss what somebody who knows the field will immediately notice. So, yung enlarging the pool and providing the necessary logistics for that. I think that's, that's the way. Making it easier to send out teams. Kasi ilan ilan lang yan. Uh, it's unbelievable how small the search groups are. And the red tape that's involved. Eh, alam mo naman, red tape sa gobyerno. Uh, I think if there are more people involved, uh, then faster. F 
faster. Faster din ang development. So, that would be one way the government can can help because, of course, Gamaba doesn't have a very big budget and uh, uh, it has a limited number of people working under it. So. We were working on a review. A review of the entire law. Uh, it's been uh, several decades now and I think it's time to review. Actually, there has been some transition, uh, transitioning into a new uh, set of guidelines, pero hindi pa yata naging very thorough. No? So I think a very thorough review and evaluation first, and then based on that review and evaluation, then uh, a uh, projected direction. One of the problems of Bramaba was uh, really how do we make sure that we don't transform the awardee into a, a so-called celebrity? Because when a, when a person uh, is singled out as an individual, a so-called artist, there's no concept of artist in our traditional cultures because every person is supposed to be an artist, a farmer, uh, well, a, a cook, and everything else, no? So the moment we just confine the, the one, uh, one person to the role of an artist, we, we somehow extricate, somehow isolate this person from his community. We, we can somehow, the sense of community, uh, because this person will no longer function as uh, what, integrate, integral part of the community. Another problem, aside from, well, let's say, a superstar developing some kind of ego and therefore no longer care for his community, another problem that we encountered in the beginning, uh, until now actually, is that whenever the stipend <laughs> comes, because uh, uh, National Living Treasurer Emanili Kanabayan receives a regular stipend from the government, just like you know, just like every national artist. One of the problems that we have encountered from the very beginning until now is that whenever the stipend comes, all the relatives try to get a piece of the pie. Kamaba is a definition of home. It's it's home. Because you have to go home. And what will you find there? And that is the Gamaba artist. Edi Mutuk, Federico Caballero, and Uwang Ahadas, three traditional artists who have faced indifference, marginalization, even armed conflict, in their own communities, but from these adversities has sprung intricacy and complexity in beaten metal, in the human voice, and the memories it sings off in a rich and dynamic musical tradition. In passing on their knowledge, all Gamaba awardees share a common responsibility to ensure the continuance of their cultures. Their dayao becomes our knowledge, our pride.